Hi guys, coming to you from a bit of a different spot today. My life is in shambles. I'm getting ready to go out of town, which always means that I have a bunch of work to do in a very short period of time. So anyways, I'm sitting on the floor in my living room and I have not planned what questions I'm gonna answer, but today, as you saw in the title, it is a Q&A I asked you on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram for some questions and I've got answers, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first question and question that I get all the time, every single day is, well, not this question specifically, but it says, are you gonna film a 12 Days of Foundation with the new releases soon? But basically I'm saying, I get questions, are you reviewing this foundation? In general, it's always my intention to review every new foundation. Does it always happen? No. Um, but I do have plans to review the new Urban Decay Naked Foundation. I'm gonna be reviewing the new Too Faced Powder. I want to pick up the Pat McGrath one as well. I need to figure out what my shade is in that, so I need to get in store. So I have plans to review just about everything that's new within reason you know i only have so much face and so much ability to test things out and as for 12 days of foundation that always comes in november so uh that will be coming in november another makeup question here i've kind of got some makeup life questions uh what is my favorite mini travel sized eyeshadow palette and face palette and they're actually both from smashbox so i love the mini smashbox i believe it is their a blaze palette because it's got my warm tones in there and then i actually really love their face palette so i liked uh, the original holiday one that they came out with. I liked the Ablaze face palette. I loved that. They did a Cali contour, which I don't remember if I tried that or not, but they all worked for my skin tone. And then my other favorite face palette, those are probably a little more travel friendly, but my other favorite face palette that I have traveled with is the Too Faced Natural Face. There's not many face palettes, how many times can I say that word, um, that fully work for my skin tone and all of those do. So those would definitely be my favorites and my favorite eyeshadow palette, like I mentioned, is the Smashbox Ablaze. But now 99% of the time, I no longer travel with eyeshadows because they never go on my face. So I've, I've cut, up, cut out of that. A couple of questions on what's up with Emily. If you are following along on Instagram or anywhere really, I was talking about a beautiful, beautiful cat named Emily that I was hoping to adopt. That Another pet related question from my good friend Renee. She said, what other pets have you had growing up and what were their names? And when I was really, really young, there was a dog in the household named Fanny, but I was like literally zero or maybe she died just before I was born, but the pet that I remember the most is my cat, Catalina. Her full name, which I named when I was four years old, was Catalina Elmira Shelley Princess Muppy Jane Rau Rau the first. The first was added on in junior high because my friend had said she was gonna name her cat the same thing, even though she's like definitely allergic to cats, but that was a cat we literally found on the street and I only found out recently that she was probably a he because my aunt was like you know we never got that cat fixed and it was like a 50 percent outdoor cat like it literally didn't even have a litter box like it would just go outside to pee i don't know if that's cruel it was the 90s times were different but um it was like half a dog almost like it would just like leave for a few days at a time it wasn't like she wasn't a mean cat or he wasn't a mean cat they weren't a mean cat but they weren't uh nothing nothing like rue and every single name of her names has a meaning to me i personally my name is samantha jane murphy and as a child i used to call myself samantha muppy jane i don't know why but that's that portion of her name and every other name has a meaning so uh she we had her up until she was about 16 or 17 years old and she got really sick really fast and although she was never around really it was of course devastating to lose her and then i got rue um about eight years later when I turned, I think I was about 23 when I got room. I got a question about if I find it challenging to be a YouTuber in Canada and no, it's hard to compare, I guess, because I have no idea what it's like to be a YouTuber in another country. But I feel like Canada is a perfect mix because in the United States, obviously, there's like 300 and some odd million people. So there's a lot more competition. You need to have, I feel like, a lot more subscribers to be recognized. When you look at all the events in LA, everybody has like millions of followers. These people are celebrities at this point. They're not like YouTubers anymore. Like they have stylists and dietitians and trainers and they're on magazines magazines and you know whatever whatever so that is like some next level stuff and that's the main people obviously there's like people who are a little bit smaller at those events but it's definitely a different vibe than what it is here in Toronto like I was going to events in Toronto at 2,000 subscribers on YouTube so 
it's definitely different here. It's a little bit harder in the sense that, of course, then it's there's not as much necessarily opportunities with brands, but at the same time, there's less people competing for those opportunities and you're able to make a bigger impact, I think, with a smaller following. And I've always tried to market myself to a Canadian subscriber because I know the American subscribers are coming either way because there's so many of them. And that's why I try to focus on Canadian shipping or Canadian beauty brands to bring in um, also to have that nice balance of Canadian subscribers as well. So I'm very, very happy to be a Canadian YouTuber. I love Canada and um, I mean it has its pros and its cons like even when you're dealing with PR it's hard because like United States will get the products months and months in advance and then even Canadian PR has trouble sometimes getting new products especially drugstore brands so it's like you're waiting on like a new foundation it takes forever to get in and it's like you can't find it in stores or I can't find my shades so that would probably be the hardest part of being a Canadian uh, YouTuber, but otherwise like I have, I have no complaints, but at the same time, it's hard for me to compare. My friend Shell asked me about what classes in school did I excel at and what did I not do so good at? I can tell you what I didn't do good at was anything with numbers. Even to this day, anything math related, I just, uh, and I will admit I didn't try that hard <laughs> for some, I don't know if it was high school, but I was like, you can't study for math, which, that's not true you absolutely can and that's probably why I did so poorly but even in university when I tried um, I've always had such a hard time with numbers my brain just does not compute it does not come naturally to me at all I remember like learning 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 teaching myself something knowing it but the minute one bit of the formula changed or the question changed a little bit I was just in the dark which means I didn't know it in the first place because I was guess I was more memorizing perhaps but yeah, anything with numbers has always been really, really tough for me. I've always excelled in more kind of like language based things, marketing, um, communications, English, that kind of stuff uh, definitely came easier to me, uh, which is good because that's what I like. But maybe that's why it came easier to me is because I liked it. I don't know. But <laughs> math, not so much. English, yes. I've got a couple questions about Newfoundland, growing up in Newfoundland, etc, etc. So I did a Newfoundland vlog uh, last September when I went home for one of my best friend's wedding. So I'll link to that down below. And then a year before that, I think when I went home, I did like a hometown tour vlog. So I'll link to that down below. If you're not familiar, Newfoundland is an island. It is on the east coast of Canada. The city that I grew up in, St. John's, is the most easterly point of all of North America. So it's like way over there. Half the time on maps, they don't even include it. Even in Toronto, people are like, Toronto's the east. And I'm like, no, it's friggin' not the east, okay? You're more east than other places in Canada, but you're not the east coast. But anyways, that's a whole other story. Uh, yeah, so it's very east. It's an island. It's a huge island to drive across it. It takes nine hours um, or eight, eight to nine hours. Um, and it's... Uh, there's about 500,000 people who live on the total island. So it's small, but at the same time, people are like, oh my God, do you like know everybody there? And like, yes, when you look someone up on Facebook, you're bound to have many multiple like mutual friends. But at the same time, I bump into more people in Toronto than I do in Newfoundland. And I feel like in Newfoundland, it's more like in St. John's, it's more of a driving city. Like everyone kind of drives everywhere. So you're not out walking. And I guess because I live downtown, it's more likely to bump into somebody in Toronto. But I was very surprised. Like I bump into a lot of Newfoundlanders in Toronto and a lot of Newfoundlanders like live near me uh, and it's I can spot a Newfoundlander even even if I don't hear the accent and that's another thing everyone's like you don't have an accent people are like you don't have a Newfoundland accent or you don't sound like you're from Canada all the time I'm like okay what do you want me to do I have no explanation it's my voice but um these people in my family they have uh, more of a Newfoundland accent and I do speak fast which I think is a little bit more Newfoundland based. People love to comment on that as well. And somebody once said, are they, are you speaking fast or are they listening slow? And that was one of my favorite things I've ever heard in my whole life. So I thank you for that. But the other question I got was growing up as somebody who was mixed race in Newfoundland and in Canada, I don't know how much I really want to get into this right now. Overall, I will say I've had no major issues in Newfoundland, like growing up as a kid, no problems. I didn't even notice. None of my friends noticed. Nobody cared. Nobody said anything. Um, I had a, I'm very grateful to have that experience because I know a lot of people don't. My, the worst part of it was just my hair um was definitely tricky but it's a it's a personal part of my life and I don't think that I really want to get into it um maybe eventually but I feel like sometimes I put a lot of myself out there and I think that 
encourages people to want to ask questions, which I get it. But at the same time, if somebody isn't talking about something, there's probably a reason they're not bringing it up, especially if there's someone like me who's an absolute oversharer. Um, that is definitely the case. But yeah, it, growing up in Newfoundland was good. Definitely, it's not a very diverse place. The, di the diversity comes from the university there for sure. People kind of tend to come and then leave. Um, but a lot of people have been sticking around more recently, which I think is super cool. It's funny, I saw an article actually um, a couple weeks ago that Newfoundland, St. John's got their first black police officer. So <laughs> way to go, a little bit behind there. Um, yeah, overall, it was a good experience. There's definitely some ignorance. Um, I wouldn't say there's any ill intent for the most part. Um, definitely some ignorance, but overall uh, a good experience. So I'll leave it at that and maybe we'll get into it another day. So this is funny. At first I thought this was sarcasm. It said, how is keto coming? I think that's what you were doing. If not, just ignore. And I think this is one of those cases of, if you talk, like I, I can think of a specific example. like. I sent my grandmother, or I didn't send her, she was going to the store, like Walmart or something, and she was going to the store and she was like, I was like, she was like, do you need anything? I was like, yes, I need a deodorant. Get me anything but baby powder scent. What scent does she come back with? Baby powder, right? It's like that thing. So I think that's what it is. I'm not doing keto. I do have a what I eat in a day series. If you're curious to see how I've been eating, kind of intermittent fasting and watching my calories, portion control. So I will link to that down below if you're curious to see more, but that has been going good. Honestly, today has been a rough day. Normally I don't eat till 12 and I was really stressed. So then I ate my lunch that I had prepped at 11. Then I had a bowl of corn pops. Then I had an English muffin all before 12. So yeah. <laughs> whoops some days are good some days are bad um but at the same time previous me would have done that and continued to eat all day current me is still kind of full from eating all of those bread products this morning so i've been able to hold off on eating anything major until i have my dinner shortly so anyways i won't get into all of that but um keto is not happening but what i am doing is going pretty good Someone asked me what uh, Rue's hobbies are and what her pet peeves are, which I thought was funny to think about your pet's pet peeves. But uh, Rue's hobbies include sleeping, napping, and laying around. She's not a very active cat. The only time she's super active is when she's up like yelling and meowing at you. She's not very playful. She will play, like she has a string. It's actually a braided like belt dress that she stole when when I adopted her off of a dress and that is basically the only thing she likes so she loves that her nems have a great time with that uh so she'll play with that but overall she's not a very active cat she literally just wants a spoon all the time which I love as well because I'm not a very active cat either and then her pet peeves she doesn't like oranges the smell of oranges she's like hoo, hoo, like she'll come over I'm like don't sniff it no and she walks towards it and I'm like I told you um every time and then she also hates like if you have like a candy wrapper and rub it together in your hands, that kind of makes her, uh, she doesn't like that either. She kind of squints up her face. Like we don't do it to her, but it's something we've noticed before. Uh, she doesn't like loud noises, obviously hates the vacuum, hates water, classic like cat stuff, but she's not scared of people. Like we had someone in an installing lights and stuff the other day and she was totally unbothered by it. Uh, and she hates other animals basically that are active. Like she met my mom's wiener dog, hated it, met my friends, Chihuahua hated it, but those are both like kind of small, like get in your face dogs, which that's understandable. And she met another cat once, but also hated that. But that cat was kind of young. So that's why I was, that's why I was really interested in this other cat that I mentioned, because they were both kind of like, just like people like to chill, not that playful. And I thought it'd be a really good match. But anyways, what next? Uh, this is good. Is there a sport I would like to try um, for fun? Of course, obviously No. Oh, speak of the devil. There he is. You want to come say hi? just woke up from an activity of napping having a snack come here hi my bubbas it's funny my one of my what are you in a day videos is doing like really really well i'm getting a lot of new people watching it and rue is like yelling the first minute of the video and people are like what is that i'm like oh, she's nice i swear we actually had a nap today didn't we <laughs> you beautiful kid i adopted rue when she was five i've talked about this in other um other Q&As. She was a Siamese breeding cat who was surrendered to an SPCA and I just happened to come across her and fell in love in Newfoundland and um, then she moved to Toronto and became city cat. And she's the most gentle, amazing cat. Get a Siamese cat. They have so much personality. They're so fun, but they're so um, chill. But anyways, oh my phone just died. 
great. Um, if there's any sports I wanted to try, honestly, I hate sports. I hate team sports. Like I'm just not competitive. I'm the kind of person that I'm like, if you want the ball, just take it. If that, that means that just, if it means that much to you, like I just can't, I used to play soccer when I was younger. I just don't care enough. I don't know what it is. I like badminton. Um, but again, I'm not really a sports person person. I wish I was. Um, and I think it's just cause I don't know. I'm just not a sports person. I want to try tennis. Does that count? I definitely want to try tennis. I mean, that's just like a more intense badminton, but I definitely want to try tennis. I think that looks awesome. Nims and I every summer, we're like, we need to try tennis, and then we never do. Um, that's something I think I can see myself doing, but team sports, not for me. Not that I'm not a team player. I was always good at group projects in school, but team sports to me, no thank you it's the devil's work <laughs> i remember another question that i got from my subscriber carla uh she's also from newfoundland and she had asked me if i had anybody kind of be hey scratching the couch um if i had anybody kind of be rude to me from newfoundland about being a beauty youtuber or about what i do and not to my face i'm sure people have talked plenty of crap behind my back um but nobody to my face everybody has been super super su supportive and said you know this is such a good fit for you and blah 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 people have been really really nice but i'm sure people think lots of things and i know a lot most a lot of people think that being a youtuber is vain and it's narcissistic i mean here i am filming a video answering i'm like ask questions about me and i'm going to talk about me um i get that you know but I, I love what i do i'm so grateful and you know i personally have watched youtube in some darker times in my life and even when I'm, you know, on a good day, on a bad day, I just love having that ability to choose to, you know, watch someone's Q&A or their what I eat in a day or watch people play Sims. That's been my new thing lately or beauty videos. Like there's always something at a different length of time and a different subject matter. There's serious videos, there's funny videos, there's videos like there's people who I feel like I have a true connection with, even if they don't feel it with me. Um, and I think YouTube is a pretty incredible place. I've learned so much. It's given so many people the opportunity to share their message that wouldn't have been able to do it before. And I think it's an incredible space. There's horrible people, obviously, but that's any industry. You can think of someone who you hate in your office or at your the story workout or whatever it is, your school, your, your class. Um, there's always going to be crappy people and a lot of them happen to rise to the top in YouTube um, because extremes grab attention and that's why you know my channel and I had some questions about my channel goals too um, why my channel could probably be bigger but I refuse to do clickbaity titles or I refuse to just jump on a trend like for me not that anybody asks one of my big pet peeves in the YouTube world actually I think someone asked me what I hate about the beauty community um, and I hate the term beauty community. Can I just say that? Um, but because everything, everybody just gets lumped together and I hate being lumped in with something that's now seen as so negative, which I don't think is negative. It's just like you have the opportunity to follow and watch who you want. So curate your own feed. Don't look at what other those people are doing don't give them that attention then they don't have that platform but nobody gets canceled nobody you know blah 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 you, everybody gets mad for a day and then they go on and launch their palette or whatever it is and nobody cares that's not at all what i was going to say though my big pet peeve is when people only upload and only pop up on their channel on their instagram when there's something they know is going to be super trendy. So it's like you haven't heard and this is I'm not thinking of anybody in particular, but it's like a new foundation launches or there's some kind of drama and here they are posting a video when you haven't seen them, you know, or I can think specifically when the Tarte Foundation 15 Shades of Beige Beige One Mahogany thing launched um, and everybody or a lot of people who had never done even a foundation review or have never once I know mentioned a shade range in a video then hopped online and we're like, I'm appalled. And here I am every single time I review a foundation, I talk about the shade range because it's something that actually affects me and it's something that's important to me and it's something that I bring to brands. I didn't hop on to do a video about that and I could have and it would have probably gotten a lot of views. And not to say that everybody who did a video about that was wrong because that's not what I'm saying at all, but I'm just saying like, if they've never spoken about it before and now you've taken, it, like it's a bit of a double-edged sword too because obviously these people should be using their big platforms but it's like you're only using it at a time that's convenient to you to make it look good to you not when 
you know, it could be some uncomfortable conversations for me, like me having to go to brands and say, hey, yeah, I'd love to work with you, but you don't actually make a shade for me. Um, things like that. It's like I have to face this every single day. So when I see people capitalizing on it, when I know that they don't really care, uh, or at least it seems that way, it's hard to tell someone's intentions. But things like that kind of grind my gears. Not that anybody really asked though. So on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. Uh, my phone is dead and I think I've been talking for long enough. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to anybody who submitted questions. Let me know your thoughts, comments, whatever on anything that I had to say today. I know it's a little bit more casual, but I just kind of wanted to, you know, chat with you and, and catch up and as we know I've been known to be able to talk to a camera unprompted for a very long period of time that is one of my talents not math so <laughs> thank you so much for watching if you'd like to connect with me you can find me on Instagram Twitter and Facebook at Samantha Jane YT and I'll see you guys next time bye